Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayimi Meseches Bechayres Daf Yud Gimel. We begin at the uh, new parak at the Mishnah, which is partway down the Amud Halikeach Uber Parasoi Shalovit Kacham. So very similar to the first Mishnah of our Masechta, except that over there we spoke about Petach Hamaras, and here we speak about firstborn kosher animals, which have kedushas bechayr given to the Kayan, processed as a carbon, if they're unblemished, if they're blemished, the Kayan just keeps it and uses it as, a, as he would. His own animal, with some differences, of course, because of the Kedusha. In any case, the, um, the case is different, but the, the theme remains the same. Petr Hamur, firstborn donkey, or firstborn kosher animal, the Bechur, only attains Kedusha if it's completely owned by a Yid. But if the guy owns it, or according to the Chachamim, even a part ownership exempts the uh, firstborn donkey, as we learned back in the first parak, or over here, as we're going to learn about the firstborn para, firstborn calf. It's exempt from the mitzvah and kedusha of Bukhar, says the Mishnah. ubar. Okay, so if a fellow purchases an unborn calf, Ubar parasa shalavit kechavim. So it's an unborn offspring within the cow belonging to a guy. So in this case, the mother animal belonged to a guy. So although the ubar belongs to the yid and it's the firstborn, there's no kedusha because either way, either if the newborn itself belongs to a guy or the mother, those are reasons for exemption. A person purchases the Uber of a cow belonging to a guy, or he sells the Uber of his own cow to a guy, even though he's not meant to transfer ownership of heavy animals to a guy, as we learned back in the first paragraph. Another example partnership. He partners with a guy, or he receives in a Kabbalah arrangement from a guy. So he's going to look after the animals, going to raise them, and they're going to split the profits. So once again, it's a sort of partnership with a guy, or or he transfers his animals to a guy in a Kabbalah arrangement. In all these cases, even if there's a firstborn kosher animal, it's exempt from Bechayra, Shinamar, as the Pasuk says. The Pasuk speaking about sanctifying the Bechayr, Shanamar be Yisrael. It's limited to Yisrael ownership. Avol but loy Bechayr not when owned by Yegoy. One more point. Hakehanam alavim. Chayavim. So although we spoke about Pidyan Petachamor or Pidyan Haben, we exempted Kehanam alavim. As we had back in the first parak, they. Uh, they were exempted, they, they uh, exempt the Israel, certainly they exempt themselves, etc. But that's only regarding those two items. But in the context of our Mishnah, Kedushas Bechayra, a firstborn kosher animal, that applies even to animals owned by Kehanim and Levim as well. Hakanim and Levim, Chayavim, Sheloi Nifteru, Me Bechayr Behemataira. They're not exempted from the uh, World of Bechayr Behem Atahira, Ella, only Bepitin Aben. They're not required to redeem the firstborn son, or Betachamar, or to redeem the firstborn donkey. Ask the Gemara. Why this uh, sequence? Why do we begin with Chamar? I mean, wouldn't it fit better, perhaps, to speak about a kosher animal first, which is the primary expression of the mitzvah Bechayr, right? It's uh, Kadosh, Kadosh is If it goes to the coin, right? Ma yuri the Tani uber chamayir bereisha. Why do we discuss initially for you know first about the uh, 
about the Chamor and the Uber Chamor. And then we move on to Ubar Parasai to speak about first bone kosher. Wisdom ratio is Ubar Parasai. Shouldn't we first speak about the Ubar Parasai, our Mishnah? Kedusha Sagufu, which describes a type of Kedusha which is inherent. A Bechar is a Karban, meant for Mizbeach. The Kedusha Sagufu, Vada, listening then, when we're done with that, the Masechta shall culminate with. A discussion about Uba Chamoire, firstborn donkeys. The Kedusha Damuhu, which was a very limited Kedusha. It's a very limited sanctification. It's only Kaddish to the extent that you have to redeem it and give the redemption to the Kayin. It's more of a value based, monetary based Kedusha. So, why in this order? Amri Bema Rabbin, it's a answer. A couple of ways. Iboy is saying one way. I did the Chaviv Lekter of Chanina. If you recall the Gemara early in the first paragraph, Chanina explained why are uh, donkeys unique? Why were they privileged to be involved in Petah Hamar other than all other non kosher animals? It's because they helped us on the way out of Mitzrayim. There's a special relevance, special personal connection there. In which case, it's Chaviv The Tana chose to discuss that first because of its dearness, because of its personal relevance. Another way to explain the order, I did the Zutra Mile, the Bematmeya, since the details, the uh, the matters regarding Khamar are relatively short and less in number than the alochis that will involve Bukhar Bematoira, possibly Shadli, it sort of packaged it, you know, addressed it, put it aside, and then proceeded to the more detailed and heavy discussion. Of firstborn koshers. Okay, so basically it's a one two step uh, system. First, we discussed Uber Chamoire, clarified all lachas regarding that, and then we moved on to Uber Asoi, the topic of our Mishnah of our Perak. Amar Bissabar Chmeni Mar Mishlokish, Mishum Rabbi Yeshua. Okay, so the Gemara quotes Rabbi Yeshua, which is in line with Rishlokish. Rishlokish is quoting him. We'll see soon why that's relevant. <laughs> like this. So we speak about Jewish ownership obligating, Goyish ownership exempting, Yisrael Shonasan Mois. How do we transfer ownership? How do we acquire behemoths? There are two main ways, either through payment, through Kesef, through Mamay, or physical acquisition, Mashiach. Taking possession, physical possession of the item. Which one works? Which one affects the transfer? Yisrael shenasa mois leiv kicham bivahemtay bidineyim. If Yisrael handed money to a guy to acquire the guy uh, guy's animal bidineyim in their laws, in line with their halachos. We'll see soon what this means. Avo bishalim ashakana. So money is an effective Kenyan, although he did not do Mashiach, he didn't take physical possession, Kana. It now belongs to the Israel and Vikhayevas Bibhira. It's obligated in Halakha Sabbachar because it's Jewish owned. Okay, so part one of the Halakha states that if Israel purchased from a guy, even with merely money, it's an effective Kenyan, it's now transferred to his ownership and it's Chayev Bukhar. On the other hand, part two of the halacha, Yisrael handed money to a goy, handed money to Yisrael, in their laws. We'll see soon what this means. Even though he did not yet do Mashiach, he's kind of the animal, and it has the opposite effect. Owned by a goy, exempted from Bukhar. Let's go back and review the halacha. Yisrael shenas moizel kom b'dineyem. In the first scenario, Yisrael paid the guy. Even without Mashiach, he acquires Jewish owned. My what does that? What exactly does that mean? Does it mean that just like the Allah is that when you purchase the guf, the body of a guy as a slave? 
You can do it with money. You can do it with money, with kesef, star, through a document, chazaka, having him serve you. So kesef is an effective form of acquisition on this goof. If it works there, certainly it works with respect to just buying his behemoth, which is secondary to his goof, right? It's based on logic. In Guf, if Israel can purchase the, the body of a guy, he can purchase him as a slave with merely money. As the Pasuk says, A guy, your slave is like your inheritance, like your estate. The Pasuk is giving him this, a similar status. He is comparing a slave to an estate, to property. Just like you acquire property with monetary payment, Ubishtar Bachazoka, likewise, Avevet Kanani, the purchase of a Goyish slave, can also be accomplished by one of these three methods, Nikna Bekesev, Ubishtar Bachazoka, some add. Okay, so if it's an effective kidney on the person, on the guy, wouldn't you uh, think that it works on his money, on his possessions, on his behema, which is second, you know, a person's possessions are secondary to the person himself extension of the person. Money the Kosh can certainly on his money. So, is that what the uh, Halacha was saying? Bidinayim, that we apply the Dinam. We apply the, the Kenyan of the Guf to the Behema. Equate, so to speak, the acquisition of his Behema to how one acquires the actual guy himself. Money the Kosh can certainly the Kenyan applies to his money. Okay, if that's the intent of the Halacha, Whatever Kenyan works on the guy works on his behemoth. I feel the Shtar Chazaka Nami. So why are we limiting it to payment? Shtar Chazaka are effective modes of acquisition on the goof of a guy. Likewise on his behemoth. Why are we limiting it to Kes? Avoid another question. Yisrael mi Yisrael Yechichu. We can challenge this analogy. We can counter this uh, logic. You're comparing Mama to the goof. What about a Yisrael from Yisrael? Yisrael purchasing from his fellow Jew. Do gufei kohen lay bekesef? How does a Yisrael acquire his fellow Jew's guf to serve him as a slave? Yavad Ivri? Through payment. But when it comes to acquiring a, a, a behema, a possession, you need to do Mashiach. Rashi brings the more condition, right? So apparently we don't consider them to be the same. El Rabbi says, Abayi, I'll tell you what the Yalacha meant. But Dineya means, a Yisrael approached the guy to purchase his behemoth, paid him with Kesef. Bidineya means, Shepaskalem Torah, in accordance with the, the method that the Torah designates for a guy is Kenyan. Look, the Pasuk says, When you purchase from Amitecha, your fellow Jew, you do it miyad. Miyad Amitecha do with When you buy from a fellow Jew, you do it with Meshicha, physical act with it, miyad. But that's limited to a fellow Jew. In contrast to a guy, the Torah is now contrasting. But when you buy from a guy, you buy a behemoth from a guy, for the money only. And that's what we meant when we said the reason why Kesef works from a guy is because the Torah differentiated. A year does Mashiach, but from a guy you have to do Kesef. Ask the Gemara, okay, I understand there's a contrast, but who says to take it this way? The Kenyan from a year is Mashiach, from a guy is Bekesef. Maybe perhaps we can argue and say a Yisrael from Yisrael is Mashiach, fine, but Miyad, when you buy from a guy, klalo, klalo, you can't be kind at all. There's no form of, of acquisition. Amri, the answer was given like Sakadatech. It's hard to say that. Based on logic. If you can buy the goof of a guy and enslave him, it's only his money. Okay, fine, there's a contrast. By a year, this Mashiach, perhaps by the guy, you need both. And that makes it different. Instead of just one Kenyan being sufficient, you need both Mashiach and Kesef. Amri, the answer is, it's counter logical. One Kenyan is sufficient 
in order to purchase the goof of a guy. Merely money does the trick. Are you going to insist that you need two kinyanim to buy his mama, which is of lower regard? Of course not. Okay, we can still say, Ay baha, ay baha. By a year, it's Mashiach. But by a guy, you have both options available. Either or. Kasafor or Mashiach. No, do me that mitecha. We compare the guy to a yid. Ma mitecha bachada. Just like when it's between yid to yid, it's only one type of Kenyan, Mashiach. Af, ayv kicham nam bachad. Likewise, with a guy, it's limited to one form. Inevitably, since it has to be different than these throws, it's going to be Kasaf. Omar Mars, this explains the first part of the Allah. Hayyid purchases the animal from a guy with Kasef. Why Kasef? Because it's Bidinayim. It's a system designed by the Torah specifically for the Kinyan with a guy, as opposed to the Mashiach, which is done only by the Yid. Omar Mars, let's go back to the second part of the Allah. What if the guy is the purchaser? Just payment without Mashiach does the trick. Now it's guy owned, Pata from Bukhar. My, what does this mean? Does it mean that he's employing Kesab, which is really an effective kidney, on the goof of the guy as well? And we're going to apply that logic. So, means that since the guy, the guy, sorry, the guy can use Kesef to buy the goof of a Yid. Right? Here's the Yid selling to the guy, right? Likewise, and certainly you can use that mode of Kenyan for the Behem of a Yid. right? Currently, be Kesef. If the guy purchases the goof of a Yid with Kesef, the Kesef Suppose that they were speaking about um, redeeming the, uh, the slave from the guy. By refunding the, um, you know, the guy, the uh, money that he paid. So apparently, it's the payment that made the Kenyan, right? If Kesef is an effective Kenyan for the goof of the Yid, the money of the can certainly, regarding the moment of the Yid, to purchase the behemoth of the Yid with Kesef. Well, you saw me, saw the Yechiyach. We can undo this uh, connection by looking at a Yisrael buying from a Yisrael. Where we see that it's not the same. Mammon and, and it's not compared to Guf. The Guf are kind of a Kasef. How does Israel buy another Israel to serve him with Kasef? But Mammon and Mashiach. But he's Mashiach to buy the Mammon. So it's not the same. I don't buy you. Again, I buy it to the rescue. The Nei Shabbat Torah. Allah meant to refer to the contrast between the uh, Kenyan established between Israelim and relative to a guy. But the name Shabbat Shalom Torah, the name, the laws, the methods that were applied by the Torah with respect to being kind of from a guy. Or selling to a guy. Right? When you sell Lamitecha. And the passage continues, Economy Adamitecha, right? So Miyad means with a physical acquisition, with Mashiach. And the Pasuk here is making that distinction. With respect to your fellow Jews, Mashiach does the Kenyan. But when it involves a guy, you need Kesef. And therefore, when the guy uses Kesef to buy the Behemoth, it says, and it's exempt from Bechir. Once again, the same string of Kashis. I understand there's a difference between a Yid and a guy, but who says to manifest it this way? Maybe with a guy, you can't do Kenyan at all. On metal and on you know behemoths. Amri la kabochaymu. The answer is it's a kabochaymu. Certainly yes. Im gufay kana amay la koshkin. The question was who says a guy can be kind of behem of a yid? Well, if he can be kind of the guf of a yid, certainly behem of a yid. Okay, we can still say the kachamadi katarati. Perhaps the guy needs two kinyanim kesef and meshich la kabochaymu. It's unlikely based on a kabochaymu gufay be'echad man mishnayim. If to buy the guf of a yid, one kinyan is enough. Certainly, his mamayin. You can't say you need shtayim. Ve'imay ba'bahab. Perhaps he has a choice. Either kasev or meshicha. Do mitecha. We compare it to the way a yid is kind of from another yid. We turn to mabayz mami techa ba'achas. Just like amongst yidin, it's one kinyan only, which is meshicha. Rashi says, "Av oyved kicham nam ba'achas." Likewise, when a guy makes a kinyan, it's one, 
And that one must be Kesef, as Rashi says, because Amitecha is with Meshicha, but a guy is not with Meshicha. Okay, so so far, what do we have? Kota Abayi's explanation of this uh, lesson, which was quoted by Rabbi Shlokish, in the name of Aishia. It was simple, there's a simple distinction between Kinyan and Monks Yisraelim, where the Gulf is Kesef, but the Imam is by Meshicha, Miyad Amitecha, but by the uh, Goyim. Uh, Guf is Kesef, but uh, they need to use um, Kesef as well regarding Metatala. Now, Amri, now comes the next next question. This is all, you know, Rishlakish's approach of Rishia, but there's a sheet called Amemar. La Amemar, the Amakonta Amemar, who says that, guess what? Meshich HaBayb Kecham Back in Baba Matziah, he teaches us that that um, a, a guy he is kind of through Mashiach so now what's the distinction what's the contrast between a Yid and a guy if they're both the same now it all works out very well if he also Yechanan who disagreed with Rish Lakish Rish Lakish actually says that a, a Yisrael needs Mashiach and a guy needs Kesef right like we said but a Yechanan flips it around he says Rabbi Yechon says by a, a Yisrael, Minatera, Mois Arkainis. Kesef makes the kidney. Kesef does a trick. <coughs> Meshicha was only employed by the Chachamim to protect the purchaser, lest you know a fire break out on, in the grain still in the hands of the seller before it was actually trans- physically transferred. Um, so to avoid that type of scenario with the, uh, you know, Good, that the goods might get damaged, and we um, we require a mashicha to clinch the deal. In which case, while it's still in the hands of the seller, before physical transfer, the seller is still responsible because the buyer could just back out before mashicha. So the seller will be motivated to protect and um, you know ensure the safety of the goods. Okay, so it's a dindarabon of an atayra. You sell the kravich nomar devar ter min atayra mo is koyne is min even amongst Yisraelim, money does the Kenyan. Meshicha, loy kanya, rather than Meshicha making the Kenyan. So now, we can still come up with a contrast between the Yid and the Goy. Ahani lamitecha. So lamitecha, which makes that contrast, will be applied as follows. Lamitecha be kesef. Amongst Yisraelim, it's kesef that makes the Kenyan. But uh, regarding a Goy, you need Meshicha. So you can still have that contrast. We just, you know, turn the tables around. On um, Amun Aleph, we learned that a Yisrael needs Mashiach, a guy has Kesef. Here, we turn it around. The Yisrael uses Kesef, guy needs Mashiach. Okay, so that still works. And we can still maintain that distinction. Ella is like a Rishlokish. But let's say a Meimar, who said that by guy it's Mashiach. Let's say he holds like a Rishlokish, which was a sheet that we had in Amun Aleph. The Amar who says Mashiach, I'm a fresh man at that actually the Maisa, the Kenyan of Meshich, of physical acquisition, is required by Torah amongst Yisraelim. So it comes out that by Yisraelim it's Meshich, and by Goyim it's Meshich. There's no difference. So what's Lamitecha coming to teach us? What's exclusive to Yisraelim? Lamitecha by Meshich. Lamitecha by Meshich. Meshich is by the Yisrael, by the Goy. Lamitecha Lamali, what's the point of Lamitecha? Where's the uh, contrast? Amri, the answer is like this. We'll be compelled to redirect Lamitecha to a different halacha. Lamitecha at a maxer, no. Amongst Israel, we have to refund and overcharge. We have to maxer, no, the Kanani, but you don't have that obligation to refund the guy if you overcharge them. Well, says the more the Kanani to exempt the refunding a guy, we have a different pasuk for that. May el altoinu ishus achiv nafka. Pasuk warns against cheating and overcharging a fellow yid. Apparently, this halacha does not apply to a guy. Well, we still need another pasuk. Chad beknani, chad behegdish. One is to exempt a guy from aina. One is to exempt hegdish. If you have a transaction with hegdish, you're exempt from aina. Utsrichi, and they're both needed. Each one is distinct and unique. Dikas rachman achad. The pasuk only mentions it once. That is one, exa- you know, exemption. 
I would apply it to which one? I would apply it to a guy. But Hagdish, oh, Hagdish, cheating Hagdish. Perhaps I know it would apply. You need two exemptions to exempt both Hagdish and Kanani from Aino. You know, this need to exempt the Kanani from Aino, that's only if you're of the position you cannot steal from a Kanani. Hainu, the Israqal, the Mishra, I know. That necessitates a Pasuk to exempt them from my know. Although you can't steal, but I know. Eli, Sovel, Kaman, Nomak, Zeil, Shokhtani, Muta, but there's a Shita which says you can even steal from a Knani. There's such a Shita. You know, Pasuk like that, but there's such a Shita. I know me, boy. If you can outright steal, of course, there's no issue of I know, of cheating and overcharging. So why do you need a Pasuk for that? Anri, the answer is like this. You're right. According to this uh, setup in the puzzle, if Amemar would in fact be of position that the gazel outright stealing of a guy is mutter, if you would hold like that, okay, then of course Aino is not applicable, and the Pasukla Amita is not needed to exempt uh, the guy from Aino or gazel. Rather, it's coming to make a contract, a distinct, uh, <coughs> contrast and distinction within the world of Kinyanim. What's deemed an effective kinyan, what's not? In other words, that the kinyan with a guy is different than the kinyan of a yid. Now, if a Maymar had established that Mashiach is the mode of kinyan by a guy, apparently, al karcha can be compelled to say that Rabbi Yechon He'll be in line with Rabbi Yechonon, that although by the, the guy it's Mashiach, but amongst Yisraelim it's Kesef. And there you go, that's the distinction. Okay, so bottom line, we have two approaches to Kinyanim. So when it comes to being kind of a goof, like the uh, Yisrael being kind of a Kanani, or vice versa, uh, a guy being kind of a Ivri, or a Ivri amongst Yisraelim, it's always with Kesef, Kesef Shtar Chazaka. Regarding Metatlum, we have Machlekes. Rechon's approach is that amongst Yisraelim, it's Mois, and according to our conclusion, Lamitecha tells you that the uh, by the guy, it's always Mashiach. Whereas according to um, Rish Lakish, it's the other way around. By Yisraelim, it's Mashiach, Miyad Amitecha. By a guy, it's Kesef. Now comes Akasha. Akasha on the Shita that by the guy, the kin is accomplished through Kesef. Here comes Akasha. A fellow purchases, you know, scrap metal from a guy, amongst which he discovers an idol, Abedizara. Now, an Abedizara that belongs to a Yid, it's a gone deal. You can't do anything with it. You can't even be mevatli. You can't nullify it because if it's owned by a Yid, it has no bitter. It's also bahano. You can't, you can't have any benefit from it. But if it still belongs to the guy, give it back to him. Okay, so he purchased a truckload of scrap metal. Or Matsuban discovers amongst the... Uh, he finds an idol. Can you just give it back to the guy? It depends. Who does it belong to? If he did Mashiach, he took physical acquisition, he loaded it up on his truck and drove away. Prior to actually forwarding payment, he didn't pay it. He just did Mashiach. He asked just give it back to him. Because Mashiach does not make for an effective transfer of ownership. It's not kind of. So that's the first part of the price. Part B. But if he did both, he had paid any did Mashiach, too late, now belongs to the Israel. Yoilich, Hano, Lamamelech, he has to throw it into the uh, Dead Sea. Get it out of the way. Okay, so let's just be mindful of two parts of the price. Part one, Mashiach only, no acquisition there. Just give it back to the good. Part B, it was Mashiach and Kesef. It now belongs to the Israel. Question. If we say that when purchasing from a guy, only mois, only money makes for an effective Kenyan, Mashiach Lamali. Why bother discussing Mashiach in the second part of the Braise? Payment alone would have done the trick. Hachma Iskina was speaking with Shakibal of Ladin Din Israel. What happened was the guy had committed to the Jewish format of Kenya, which is through Mashiach only. 
So that's why, until you do Mashiach, it's not a kin. Yoch, if that's the case, that he's submitting to Mashiach, more Islamically, why bother speaking about payment? It's totally irrelevant. Hachikam, the Brahisa means, Avu Bishnasam Mois. Meaning to highlight that even if he paid, that's not sufficient because they committed to the Jewish Yisrael form of kinah, which is Mashiach, and therefore, Imashach, if he did Mashiach, in Yap, there's a transfer. He loy loy, but otherwise not. Yochik Hashirisha. Well, I'm talking that they committed to Mashiach, making for a Kenya, so let's go back to the first part of the right. It's like a seesaw, we're we'll going to go back and forth. He did Mashiach there. I thought Mashiach is kind, how could he just give it back? Amr Abai, so we're going to have four shot. Amr Abai, Reisha Mashandika Mekachtos. The truth is that the Israel, the uh, merchant here, never had any interest in buying an idol. It's a mistaken transaction. That's why you can give it back. Amalei Rav says, Rav, okay. That explains the ratio. Mishun Likir Mekachtos. So just give it back. Was Seifa like a Mekachtos? In the Seifa, we did the Kinyan Mois and Mishikh. There's no Mekachtos. It's just as much a mistake as in the ratio. Why can't just give it back and nullify the whole transaction retroactively? Elama Rav says, Rav, I'll explain it to you. Reisha v'seifa mekachtos. The truth is that in both first and second case there was a mekachtos, and really, menatayra it's null and void. Just give it back. But we're concerned about the observer getting confused, and misconstruing what happened. You see, Reisha in the first case, loyev zuzi, he didn't pay for it yet. He simply drove away and then discovers the turns around. Drops it back open, it's done deal. There's no money exchanging hands. It doesn't look like he's reselling it to the God. It doesn't look like it was a Jewish owned idol, which he's now selling it to a guy and getting money back. So that's why it's okay to just give it back. Save it, the Zuzi, when the safer, we actually paid. So now when he returns it, he's going to get a refund. Now, it looks like the guy is buying. I mean, a fellow just walks in right now. Imagine, he sees an idol being transferred from the year to the guy, and the guy paying him. It sounds like he's paying for it. Not really just refunding a, a, a sale. So Marisa Ayin, it looks like it was a Yisrael, it's the Zara, being sold to a guy, having an offering. That's not allowed. So that's why we compel him to destroy it. Vabai Amalach, Vabai responds. He says, look, actually I hold that the Mekachtos clause only applies in the Reisha. Reisha Mekachtos. In the first case, where he only did Mashiach, that's a true Mekach Tos, the Loyada. He didn't realize that there was an idol there. The Haloyah of Lezuz, he never paid for it. He wasn't re- expected to inspect the, you know, the load prior to the payment, so it was a true Mekach Tos. He has a right to return it. Safer, but in the second case, where he paid for it, La Mekach Tos does not have a status of Mekach Tos. You know why? The Kivan the Yav Zuzi, since he paid for it, Kika Mashiach, so as he was taking it before taking delivery, he should have checked it out. And Tais explains, because it's expected. I mean, you know that amongst the guys scrap metal, you're bound to find idols and forms and all kinds of other desires. So you can't just employ the Mekachtos button in this case. Because, you know, the derech, Rashi says the derech is that a merchant, you know, when he's about to pay, inspects his goods. So in the race, there was no payment. It wasn't expected. So when he discovered it, it was a true surprise and it's a mechatot. And the safer, where he paid for it, it was expected of him to inspect prior to, to, to doing that. <coughs> in which case, when he actually takes delivery, it's considered his. It's as though he accepted whatever's in there. And you can't just, you know, consider it null and void. So if it's owned by Yid, it's Asubah, no. Here comes a third shot. Ravashi Yom HaMid Reisha Meshicha Eina Koina. Say, if you're not Meshicha Eina Koina, just like in the first part of the Bryce, Meshicha is not an effective Kenyan. It's still considered the guys. Just give it back. In the second case as well, Meshicha is not a Kenyan. And Rashi explains, we're not speaking that they submitted to work with the, you know, Jewish Kenyan system as the other ways, you know, as the Rav and Abai explain. No. Between a year and a guy, it's Kesef only. Part A was just Mashiach, doesn't work. Part B, there was Kesef, so it's a Kenyan. The question was, so in scenario two, there was Kesef. Why bother speaking about Mashiach? 
once you have Kesa, which is a kidney ba'idi, the Tana, Reisha Moshech, on account of the Reisha where it said Moshech, which was needed to describe what happened, Tana Seif Elami Moshech, the, uh, the Raisa added the word Moshech to the Seif as well, but it really wasn't necessary for the case. Ravina Amar, here comes Pshat number four, Ravina says, the Seif of Meshech HaKoyna, Reisha Na Meshech he goes back to the uh, Pshat where they submitted to the uh, uh, Kenyan system of Israelim, meaning that Mashiach will make the Kenyan. And Mashiach and the Sefer makes a Kenyan, and Mashiach and the Reisha makes Kenyan. So, what does the Reisha mean? Reisha, Chikamar, and the Reisha meant like this. Im loy nasa. We have to modify the wording. If there was no payment, Im loy nasa, v'loy mashach. There was no nasinas, mois. There was no Meshicha. Okay, so then, certainly, there's nothing doing. Just give back to him. The answer. Give back to the guy. Now, what, what's the, um, what's the backing up? It says, Yachser, go back. What are you going back on? He didn't pay for it. He didn't even take it, pick it up. My yachs, what does that mean? Yachs with the He's going to go back on his word. He, uh, he verbally committed to buying this thing. He can go back on it. That's the chiddush of the brayse. Although typically one is meant to follow through on his verbal commitments. But in this case it's different. Because the brayse is explained to us. The brayse holds. Dvarim yesh b'em shem Typically words, verbal commitment is binding to a certain extent. And backing off from a verbal commitment, it's called mechusra amana, lacking in faithfulness. That's only amongst Yisrael who keep their word. Who their word it may mean something. from they abide by their verbal commitment. So there, it's really a commitment. but a yid goodbye from a guy, nothing doing. Ms. Sheker, it's all the same thing by them. They don't, they don't stand by their words. Loy, there's no issue. It's not considered. That's what the Brysa is teaching us. Don't worry about backing off, giving back as idol, as I isn't. Okay, so we had a Brysa. In the first case, Israel bought from a guy and did Meshicha. Discovers the idol, give it right back. The second case, it was Kesav and Meshicha. Too late, it's yours. You've got to throw it away, Tiyama Melach. And we have always to explain this Brysa in accordance with the Shita, that really uh, amongst Goyim, it's the, uh, the Kesav that makes the Kenyan. <coughs> as opposed to Meshicha by, by Yisraelim. And still we can explain the Brysa and both parts of which, uh, both parts of the Brysa perfectly well. Why in the Reisha? You could just give it back because there was no Kenyan, whereas in the Seifa, it belongs to Israel. He, has, he must discard of it appropriately. Okay, all the best to you and that's Lacharabah.